Mission to order. I invite you to join with us in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Whole staff up here. In case of fire, there are two ways that you may find to exit the, these chambers. To my left, your right is through the double doors. Turn left, down the flight of stairs. At the base of the stairs, again turn left and go directly outside. Or perhaps the best way and quickest would be at the rear of the chambers, through the double doors and again uh, down the stairs. And uh, when you're outside, Please walk a safe distance away from the building. Secretary, please take the roll. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Absent. <coughs> Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella. Absent. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we move item number 10, other business extension requests, to right after item number 7, bond releases, and also add an extension request for public hearing 2930 to our agenda. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? <coughs> it's unanimous. The uh, staff reports, town attorney has none. Uh, zoning enforcement officer, welcome, Rich. I hope you're feeling better. It's yes. good to see you. There. I am. Thank you very much. Uh, i try to make this quick because I know we have a number of things to go on. Um, since, since June until present, uh, we've had 34 formal complaints that we've acted on. Uh, notices of violation, two citations, and uh, several cease and desist orders. I'll just go over a couple of the things that we brought up at the last uh, meeting that I attended. There was a question regarding 33 Post Office Road, the blight conditions over there. Uh, that has since been actually sold, and the new owner has uh, cleaned up the property quite a bit. Uh, so there's no issues at that location. Um, 114 North Street, there was an issue with blight, a house up there, uh, or old house. And uh, the present owners are in the, uh, actually going through a, a demo with the building department to actually demo that building. Uh, there was a question regarding uh, corner lot visibilities at Hazard Avenue George in South George, Washington. Uh, I've been in contact several times with uh, DOT to mitigate that problem. Uh, the property is actually on uh, DOT property. Oh, I'm sorry, state property. So we're trying to take care of it that way. Uh, there was also uh, Louise Drive Post Office Road. Uh, one of the parties there has taken care of it. The other hasn't. So I'll move forward and try to do something else to get that cleaned up. Uh, there were uh, two cases that the were turned over to the town attorney. 350 North Maple Street. Uh, I have been up there twice so far. The property, that was a junkyard, if you don't remember. Um, quite a bit of the material has been removed. The, actually, the, uh, the neighbor from uh, Mayfield brought over two dumpsters and helped uh, clean up quite a bit of the property. Uh, we're still in the process of assisting them and, and getting them to clean it up a little bit more. So there's going to be uh, several more inspections till it actually gets cleaned up. Uh, 117 North Street, that was the construction operation and excavation. That's in the hands of the town attorney, and she's moving forward with that. Uh, 146 South, South Street, Tarno. Uh, over the past couple of years, there's been several violations there, numerous violations, actually. And on uh, 613, I issued a citation. And... Uh, it was inspected again on the, the 19th of July. Uh, they varied in, uh, based on his special permit approval, uh, there was a number of items of materials in the front parking lot. Uh, there were snow plows, 
excavation equipment. Those were all supposed to be in the rear. You since moved those, cleaned up the uh, material storage in the front parking lot, and taken care of uh, soil and erosion control measures that were supposed to be in place that for some reason uh, he either took down or uh, they fell down. Uh, a recent one was 645 Hazard Avenue. It's a house, last house on the left on Hazard Avenue. And that was just on 823. There were 16 individuals living in the house, uh, <coughs> migrant farm workers. So we got a couple complaints on that. Uh, he was issued a notice. I went in there on the 23rd with uh, the housing officer and the fire department. Uh, no smoke detectors. It's on septic and well. Uh, there was an oil tank in the basement that was leaking and numerous extension wires all over the house. So on that day, the property, the owner actually met us there. Uh, all the individuals were moved out and he, he was in the process. He actually called an electrician that showed up while we were there to take care of some of the electrical problems. Uh, but since that time, nobody's been living in the house. So that's been corrected as of right now. And that's about it. Any questions? Before the CEO, hearing on any uh, questions would be for the town attorney through, uh, through, uh, no, okay. Then, uh, approval of minutes, August 8th. Any additions, errors, or Mr. omissions? Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of August 8th, 2019. Second. Okay. Motions made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? One abstentions. Two. 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 Sorry. That's all right. So it's five two. At this point, at the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, we welcome uh, concerns and comments, opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield. From anyone who's present, provided you may not discuss any matter of business at this time that's already on this agenda. Any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the uh, commission, which there aren't any, I believe, and any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending. Is there anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Last call to address under those conditions. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, I, I will. Yes. When I. <laughs> we will sit uh, as far as the sitting in for the absent commissioner will be uh, Commissioner DeGray. Okay, public uh, bond releases. First one on the agenda is 54 Hazard Avenue. You have on the table uh, the, the backup letters and the requests. Charlie, any of the public hearing stuff? I thought we couldn't hear it tonight. No, these these are already to, uh, through the town attorney says that we can. Oh, we can do it. This is these we can. Okay. No motion? Then we leave it? Mr. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the bond release for um, 54 Hazard Avenue, map 56, lot 26, in accordance with the memo as in our packet of September 12, 2019. Second. The amounts, please. Is $660. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? No abstentions, unanimous. Costco Wholesale Corporation. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that um, we approve the release of the bond for PH 2393 Costco Wholesale Corporation, um, landscape bond in the amount of $10,000 per the memo dated to September 12th, 2019. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? 
Hearing that, all in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, you. Item 10. That's the last one. We have made a motion was made to move. I'm sorry. Uh, those were the was to move item 10. And so we would jump over, please, to the notification. I'm sorry. To the business extension requests. To the business extension requests. Do I hear uh, these also? Can, according to the town attorney, be uh, acted upon? What's your desire? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we provide an extension for public hearing 2939 to Enfield Street, Pride Limited Partnership requests an additional 120 days to file the special permit on the land records. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? No abstentions, unanimous. And Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the extension for public hearing 2926, 561 Hazard Avenue, O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Um, request an additional 180 days to file the special permits on the land records. Second. Motions again made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? It's unanimous. And the, for public or special um, SPR 1733 100 Print Shop Road, Win Stanley Enterprises requests additional time to allow to, to apply for a building permit. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. And lastly, for public hearing 2930, Enfield Terrace, Enfield Manor Redevelopment um, requests um, an extension of time to October 31st, 2019 to file the special use zoning certificate. Second. Motion's made second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay. Unanimous. No old business, new business, and secretary, please uh, read the uh, legal notice. Again, this legal notice, uh, because of non-communication or disrupted communication, uh, we will have to hear these again, and, and the we can hear tonight, and but we will continue the. Uh, hearings till the next uh, meeting and all materials both uh, written and oral will be con uh, continued and, pa and passed on through. Let me tell the people that are here for these meetings. That's what I just said. Yeah, I know, but so they know which ones you're talking about. Well, that's anything that was on the uh, uh, legal notice. Okay, the uh, public hearing 2946, Secretary, please read the legal notice and uh, take the uh, roll. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, September 12th, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. 28 Maple Avenue special permit application to convert a two-family home with a former studio space into a three-family home. Elegance by Design LLC owner Adam Fiore applicant map 21 lot 12 Thompsonville district zone 2. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. And again, Linda DeGray will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. Is the applicant here? Yeah. Please, uh, your name and address, sir, and uh, to explain to the commission your project. Okay. Uh, my name is Adam Fiore. I live at 24 Harvest Hill Road, uh, West Simsbury, Connecticut. Um, so 
the property that I purchased was, um, how to put it, uh, occupied by a less desirable um, tenant, if you will, um, and the place was just uh, extremely run down. You have no, uh, you have no material dis display or sh to show the. Commission? I included architectural drawings, um, engineer drafting. Uh, okay, we I, have I those. Had like 16 pages. All right. I, since you're going over the year on television, I didn't know if you'd have anything that was appropriate to show to the people who were listening in at home. That's all. It's to oh, your thanks. advantage. Uh, as of the moment, um, no. But, all right. If you'd continue, then sorry. Okay, thank you. So I, I bought this rundown property, uh, and I found out later after I purchased it that uh, it was never zoned as a three-family. It was zoned as uh, a two-family with a commercial um, space, if you will. But it was an illegal studio apartment for, I don't know, at least 20 or 30 years. And then I started going through the house, and I just noticed the whole entire house is pretty much worthless. Um, the electrical system is shot, the furnace. There's only one furnace for 3,000 feet. So my entire plan is to pretty much gut the house, pull all the wiring, pull all the plumbing, um, fix structural issues as I come across them, and then pretty much rebuild the entire home from the inside out. And then there was a porch above the studio uh, portion of the home. I want to enclose that. I want to turn it into a loft apartment and then have three separate units. Commissioners? Uh, I did go by the property and it is, as you said, run down. Mm -hmm. um, question, is that three-car garage coming down also because it kind of looked a little shaky like I wouldn't put my car in it, it it's a little <laughs> dilapidated um, my overall intent is to kind of push it up reframe it I wouldn't use it as a garage I was thinking more of like a shed kind of um, thing but yeah I can sturdy it up that's not a big deal that's a couple two by fours and some lateral bracing and the other was parking if you turn this into say two families in a, uh, a studio mm -hmm. I'm imagining a minimum of six spaces, five to right. six cars is there enough space back there with that closet Within that, that configuration shed that where the hatchway is I can easily fit four cars maybe six if I take down that shed probably definitely six another option would to go from the side road um, I forget the name of the street. Spring. Yeah, think, yeah where Maple and Spring intersect. <clears throat> take out that fence, take out that row of bushes, put in a two-car uh, driveway on the side. Okay. That's all my questions. Thank you. Go. Kenny, okay. So if you were to, <clears throat> if you were to take down the shed, mm -hmm. you'd have to stack the cars? Uh, what do you mean stack the cars? One right in back of the other. Oh, yeah, it, it probably had to be like three rows of two. Right, so your tenants are going to have to bug each other to move. Or a come car up with to get an efficient system as to who parks first, leaves and last then, kind of thing. If you come in off of Spring Street, you're going to have no yard for the tenants. You'd be using the yard for additional parking. Um, I'm open to suggestions if you have something in mind. The problem is what we are given here one i'm concerned about egress are there going to be fire escapes uh second means of egress off the second floor where are they going to exit to um are they going down to the sidewalks because that house is right on the road well that's what i was right waiting for with the rest of you but that is, i think is carried through in the uh building inspectors or the, the building department and the fire <laughs> department as far as fire ratings and uh, proximity to other houses and uh, well, it's I not don't so know, I was going to ask him if he'd read the recommendations from uh, fire department and, and uh, yeah they asked for um, 
international building codes, so they want to see things like sprinkler systems and um, other expensive. Well, you said uh, you didn't not say necessary. in your so people understand what we're talking about. This house was built in the 1900s, right? And so you do have to bring it up. I'm sorry, Kenny, but well. I used to own the house almost across the street from this, and that house is constantly parking on the road because there's always junk cars in that little driveway that's there. So parking is a huge issue for me. And I understand the building codes, but we're also in charge of safety. Right. And where are these egresses going to hit the ground? I mean, we don't have anything showing. Is it going right onto the sidewalk? Is it going to go into the driveway? You know, are there any? As it stands right now, there's two points of egress. Two staircases internally inside the building? There's more than two internally. There's... For each unit? No, not for each so unit. So, Ken, you're asking for your internal uh, design? All I care about is external. If there's going to be external. external staircases... Okay. The architect did not include any. That's not on the plan. So everything that I've submitted is what I intend to build. Mm -hmm. If the building inspector has an issue with it, um, we can address it and change it. When you purchased the property on the street card, it did not list it as a three family. It listed it as a two. A two family. And it made no mention of the studio or commercial. <clears throat> or kind of just added bonus. Well, you thought it was an added bonus until the town said that doesn't exist. Well, they said it was commercial. So, I mean, even if um, they say no, no three family, I'll just rebuild it as a commercial spot. Okay, I'm all set. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. No. Uh, how many square feet is the proposed uh, loft apartment? Uh, this total or the second floor? Uh, total, first and second floor. I believe it's around 850 feet. 850. Thank you. Because I have a question in terms of, you know, the. the <gasps> There, I did notice. I went past the property, and I did notice the, the three-car garage back there. And, and, and all of a sudden, in, in, in my mind, I had envisioned the fact that if you did have three tenants, you know, and each tenant had a garage, they would have a place to park one car directly behind, you know, in their garage, and another one directly behind it. If, I, and again, I don't know what exactly what the configuration is. If that's possible, it might be possible for two, but the one, I guess. To, to the inside of the, the property, it might be impossible if somebody's already parked there, or if there's a double stack car, you, you might not even get into that third garage. But but again, I, I also have a problem with the fact that um, you know it, it it needs parking, and, and the parking should be provided in in accordance with our. Um, regulations only because the on-street parking I, it, it's so crowded down there you know it's a one-way street and 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 you you know if you park a car there I don't even know that there's a uh, lot of not enough space street. yes it is Maple Avenue is a one-way street but, yeah yeah but it's on the corner so right I guess half of the building is on a one-way street our, and there's our, also right. a parking um, a parking lot towards the end of the street across the street from what is it that bar that used to it's be there? a private parking lot though which is currently for sale. Oh. So, so you know, I, again, I, my concern is that you know we, we should have parking, and, and the fact that um, you know he, he, it will have to conform with the building department requirements in terms of you know, and, and he does yeah, mention the spots. fact that you know he does want to see fire separations and you know fire ratings, you know, depending on location adjacent to the street and and and, and how the proximity to just exposure to you know yeah potential but that's all easily solvable with building materials correct and, and as long as you realize that and yeah, and yeah. you know and and i guess the last thing is that you know if the 
if the codes don't require a second means of egress from the second floor, mm -hmm. but I'm sure you're going to have to have at least the egress windows where if somebody had to get out of the window, they would have to get out. But, you know, it, it, we can it, build a, you know, a staircase going up the back side of the house. It's not a massive expense. I, and again, if, if that's the solution, then, then I, I think that, you know, our preference would definitely be that, you know, we would have expectations that people don't get trapped in the second floor because of the fact that there's only one way out. That's fine. Definitely doable. What what would you suggest for him then? For he might want to bring in for the next meeting. Do you want drawings of this uh, exit? Uh, where do you suggest? You, you know, I, I think I would suggest that we, we get a better site plan in terms of the logistics of the backyard, in terms of, you know, exactly how much room do you have there. You know, I, I think that if you just bought the house, ideally you, you would have had to have a site plan in order to give the bank something that, you know, that this is what you were buying. No, I don't, I bought the no? house outright. All right. But, but I, I mean, again, I... I, I, I read the, the, the analysis, and it's only a tenth of an acre. Or it's a little greater than a tenth of, tenth of an acre. So, um, you know, I, I would just like to know, you know, exactly, you know, how the, the parking would work. Yeah, that's going to be the biggest complication there. Because uh, the town doesn't recommend parking on the street. In fact, uh, it's mentioned in the uh, things. Uh, also, are you aware that uh, they plan to uh, reconstruct Spring Street and uh, uh, what is it, Mar uh, Maple, and therefore, if you're going to do anything with the sewer that they wanted you to check and see the condition of it. Uh, yeah, the house is getting all new plumbing, so once we get that far, we'll. We'll, well figure it out. I just want to ask if you'll make sure that you get that done before they redo the road. When are they doing the road? It says spring, I believe. You guys approve my plan. I'll make sure it's done. I can't do anything I without just, I mean, I, plan. I, I thank you for taking an older house and, and redoing it. I, I think that's great. But uh, I know you have faced several problems. And uh, reconstruct, uh, having the road reconstructing and then tearing it up, it happens all too often around towns. And uh, it would be just nice to see one reconstructed and not torn up immediately. I would love for that to happen. <laughs> yes. Just, just another item. In terms of, you know, I noticed that there's like abandoned mattresses in front of the house and couches and, and whatnot. Is, is that something that you're going to dispose of so that it doesn't create an eyesore for the, the entire neighborhood? Or are you going to leave them out there forever? Or are they yours? Or are they somebody else's? You know. My uh, secret mattress collection, you call me. I was trying to get into <laughs> it. Um, no. Um, I'm still cleaning up around the house. There's like, I don't know what these people do, but I keep finding mattresses, couches. Um, I found an ottoman. Um, but they just throw stuff behind that garage and I'm cutting down like all the trees and stuff and I'm just dragging everything out. I wanna just get one pile and then I'm gonna call for a big trash pickup. Uh, the dumps, they won't take mattresses without like charging me $15 a mattress. So once I have accumulated all the trash i'll get one pickup from the town because oh, i also noticed that you're doing some demolition in terms of if you're going to be doing you know remedial work inside the house would it would it be you know possible to get a dumpster out there and actually there is put, a dumpster there there is a dumpster in there there is a dumpster so there. you can't put your mattresses and everything into that dumpster yet uh, no they, they, there's a total different system for it, or where they throw everything. I'm not exactly sure how they do it, but they, they don't like me throwing out mattresses, uh, refrigerators, or air conditioners. They charge you additional if you put a mattress in a dumpster. So what he's saying is the neighbors are going to have to put up with the blight until he's done and makes a pile for the town to get. Now, we can cite for blight because he does not have a building permit on the property and he started the work without a building permit. And I mean, what you're sitting here telling us is forget the neighbors, the mattresses are staying until you're ready to call the town for a pickup, which I see is unacceptable if you're a neighbor over there. I have been by it quite a few times myself. I mean, either throw them in the dumpster oh, or put them yeah. back in the house so the neighbors don't have to look at this. Yeah. 
Sorry, Bridge. I was going, I was going down that line, but you beat me to it. That's good. Okay, if we can uh, help him out, uh, things that you would like for the next meeting so that he comes forward with. Are, are, Janet, did you write them down? Um, yep, so it looks like um, a new site plan um, will need to be uh, provided to the commission showing parking um, and any kind of outside egress that um, might be necessary. Um, and the blight issues outside will need to be taken care of. Okay. Now, if you will, you had, I'm sorry? Did she also say Well, yeah, yeah. there's yeah, points yeah, yeah. of egress, right. If you will, sir, uh, uh, remove yourself from there while I open it to the public. You got it, thank you. Do you have a chance to uh, come back if you haven't, if they have any questions you wish to answer? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Last call to speak in favor or against this application. Again, this uh, hearing will be continued once the motion is made uh, till the next hearing of the commission, which is on uh, yeah. September 26. Mr. Chair. Oh, I have one more. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's oh. OK. The application itself, too, is also very misleading because it's convert. I'm sorry. I see it. Okay. It, it does say legal. Anything else before we make the motion to move? <laughs> Sir, you're, do you're done this since nobody came up. All right. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we continue public hearing 2946 28 Ma Maple Avenue to our September 26th meeting. Second. Motion's made, seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Any abstentions? It's unanimous. Um, is the is the applicant aware of why we're postponing this because of the time for I, the well, posting? I, I that's what I said at the beginning. All we did send out hearings. a notification. Okay, so, so. he's aware. Yep. Okay. Yes, all that hearing and all the future hearings this evening must be continued because of the lack of communication between the producers of the legal ad and the town. And so therefore, we the, the legal ad that there, actually it was not legal, and we have to make things legal. Otherwise, both the applicants would have problems, insurance, and uh, all, all kinds of problems. I'll leave yep. it at that. No, it's that, that time was prior, I'm sorry. Uh, public hearing 2947-145 Cottage Road. Is the applicant here? Okay. You'll come forward, please, and uh, present your program after I have him read the legal notice and uh, take the roll. Okay. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, September 12, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2947-145 Cottage Road, special permit application to enlarge an existing garage and add a new garage. Frederick Mascata, owner applicant, map 96, lot 36, R33 zone, Lake Overlay District. Ch Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lafakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Linda DeGray will be sitting in on this uh, for this hearing in the absence of commissioner. I'm sorry. Oh. All right, if you will, please, uh, the names and addresses, and uh, you can tell us about your project. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and the board. Uh, my name is Fred McSada, 145 Cottage Road, Enfield. Rob Olivo, our builder from 98 Hall Hill Road, Summers, <clears throat> Connecticut. And our application is for uh, an overlay district in Shaker Pines, 
We're trying to extend an existing garage. Uh, it's a 12 by 20 garage. We're trying to extend it 10 more feet with an addition of a 20 by 24 foot garage attached. And that's why we're asking for a special use permit. And that's it. You have also no displays for us except what was uh, given. Well, yes, got that's a correct. Clear site plan. Well, that that's details. Right. I just yeah. I didn't know. If um, some of this I tried to I tried to bring other get other plot plans to show you more of the the neighborhood and how the neighborhood is set up because the Shaker Pines district is very <laughs> non-conforming. Yeah, it sure uh, is. I had a difficult time doing that because the GIS system that the town has uh, doesn't show properly the the um, the property lines, and there are many of the plot plans that are not on file. So I kind of ran into a, a dead end there. I know that's not really surprising, and I was very interested in looking at the. Uh, I guess it must be the original way back when it was Pine Point Lake and uh, I don't know what what year this was 19 1980 well this is dated 1980 but uh, it's long before that when uh, it was developed as a I believe it was a religious campground yeah and, and originally it was the Shakers they uh, they cut pine trees and floated them down the lake to work in their sawmill, and that's how they made their furniture. And that's what kept them going. Okay, questions for the applicant? Is that what you will be doing in the garage? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't have that ability to, I'm not a very good carpenter, thanks. <laughs> that's why I hired him. <laughs> I mean, with the limited area, buildable area that you have out there, He's not making the encroachment any worse than what it is now. Oh, I know. Right. right. So, I, I mean, his site plan is pretty detailed as to what he's doing. It's self-explanatory. But uh, we'll see what the neighbors have to say. And uh, we're trying. We're trying to keep it as limited and as good-looking as we possibly can. Uh, I know that there are other avenues. We could put up small sheds and that kind of thing, which would be more detrimental to the looks of the of the of the yard than a nicer looking addition than what we're going to put up. So, any further any questions from the rest of the commission? Do, do, do. The only thing I would say is. When my wife saw my garage when we were building our house and she thought it was bigger than the house, I got a huge problem from her. Are you going to get the same issue from your wife? The reason, really, the reason that uh, the garage is going to be so big is because the house is so small. Mm -hmm. We left a three-bedroom garrison on two acres with a couple of outbuildings and a two-car garage, which I happen to suffer from a bit of collectophobia. And I kind of filled them up, so I've had to offload a few things. I haven't offloaded enough yet, but the house is full, so I need some other place because the seams are bulging. I need some other place to put some of this stuff. Is this a two-story home? Where we live, yes. Yeah, it is two-story. You yes. occupy the house yourself? Yes, yes, we do. Thank you. Well, that was going to be my question. What was the motivation for building such a big garage? But I guess it's to store stuff? Yes. We have, yeah, we have absolutely no storage in the house. The house was a cottage they built, I think, in That's the... That's everything out there, right? Early in the 50s, and it's been renovated. Uh, it's, it's, I'm going to say the, the main floor is, is an open floor plan, which is the the den, living room, kitchen all together. There's two bedrooms and he completely finished the basement. But it's, it's got all the utilities in the basement also of a full heating system, a full HVAC system. Um, and he also installed a full bath in the basement. Um, 
What else is on there? Um, washer dryer. Washer dryer. Thank you, Rep. <laughs> washer dryer system. Uh, so it, it's pretty. It's pretty packed. There sure. isn't much room for anything else in there. So. What is it that you collect, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I'm a drummer. I have a, a few pieces of percussion equipment. I've already had to give. I inherited eight timpani. I didn't inherit them. I bought them. <laughs> but I had to give four of them away. I gave them to the Glastonbury Junior High School. Uh, but I still own, I think, four more drum sets and a few other pieces of percussion equipment and some other things. And I collect a few things from the fire service. I got a few, a few things from that. Thank you. All set. All okay. Because I have one question in terms of the, the side walls of your new storage area or garage, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, they're not going to be any t taller than eight feet in terms of you know from the finished floor to the, to the top plate would be eight feet. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, because it doesn't say on your drawing, and I, I think it, it does say that you know that the limited you know height is going to be right, is, right. is 12 Thank feet. So, you know, the, the height of the trusses is, is a little over six feet. So it, it can't be much more than eight feet, in, in order to meet you know the, the the average height over. While it is not drawn on the gable view, you're correct. Uh, in working through the years with the building uh, department here, typically they do make sure that while I submit the set of plans to them that they make sure that I do put uh, 12 foot to the center of the gable is maximum height from the ground. Correct. And so that and will be on there. Our, okay. Uh, it, that it, is it, an it, oversight. I just want to make sure that I was reading your drawing correctly. Anything further from the commission? Didn't we just change that? Just make a comment. I'm sorry? Yeah, make right. a comment. You're, you're can, aware uh, we changed the regulation. It's now 15 feet to the center of the gable. Uh, that hasn't been adopted yet. It's, it has still has to come forward. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you need it bigger, wait a couple months. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Uh, okay. Maybe his wife won't like <laughs> that. <laughs> I, I can appreciate your problem, Mr. McSad. I moved from a 10 room to a three room. Same thing. <laughs> Without a garage. You feel my pain. <laughs> Dumpster company loved it. Yes, they do. Okay. That's in the Allied liked room, me a lot, years. too. Years. Any, uh, anything else from the friends. commission? <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you, you will, I'll open it to the public. <laughs> if anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Last call, anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Chair will entertain a motion to continue. Don't know Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we continue public hearing 2947 for 145 Cottage Road to our September 26th meeting, 2019. Second. Any, any motions made and seconded? Any discussion? Hearing on all in favor? Any opposed? No abstentions. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. And we See apologize you. about the special hearing. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Fifty-four Palumba Drive. Secretary, please uh, take the roll and read the legal notice. And the applicants, applicants, please come up and be prepared to give you name and address. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold Sir. a public hearing. Sir, you got to set it up over there. All right. Please continue. Uh, uh, Sorry. Right. The Enfield Public and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, September 12, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2948, 51 Palumbo Drive, special permit application for outdoor recreation with audio and dining patio with seasonal bathroom addition and a permit to serve liquor at the Wooden Tap Restaurant. DEFCON Commons LLC owner, Michael Hamlin applicant, map 56, lot 7, BL zone. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nicholas Lafakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Hermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. 
Linda Gray will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. Okay. Good evening. My name is John Tunsky. I'm a landscape architect for Two, Two Design LLC. We're at 114 West Main Street, New Britain, Connecticut, Suite 202. Um, today, tonight, we're seeking a special permit approval for an outdoor dining patio and entertainment area for the wooden tap at 51 Palumba Drive. Um, so far, the approvals that we have obtained are uh, we've um, Inland Wetlands and Water Course Agency determined that no permit was required for our, these activities. And we also had administrative approval for uh, the facade improvements for the front of the building. We are in a BL zone. Um, I'm going to stand up and speak to the site plan now. This development. Close, okay. So this development, um, sir, if I may, if sure. you stand to the side because you're being picked up by the camera over here, and the people at home have much of an interest in the project. Great, thank you. Okay, so uh, this space here, this is an outdoor space currently, and it's just a, a lawn panel. Um, this is at the Big Y Plaza. Uh, Wooden Tap has leased this building, which is uh, formerly a. Uh, Chinese restaurant and then to the north is the uh, Goodwill building. So our plan is to develop this just lawn area right now into an outdoor dining and entertainment space. Uh, for this space we're providing a hundred or 1,850 square feet of dining area that's highlighted here there's a on your plans there's a darker line represented here that is the square footage we're allowed um, as well as 19 tables and 116 seats. Uh, which is exactly half of the indoor space, which is what is allowed per zoning. May I make a suggestion that you turn this up so that people at home can orient themselves? Because I can do it, and the rest of the commission probably can, but yeah. north yeah. should be north. And yeah. This is north. Well, okay. then I'm sorry, put it the way the buildings are. Looking because at the that's a, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that helps. All right, I very good. People will be able to orient themselves a little bit. Sure. So this is the parking lot. So as you drive into the parcel, um, that's the lawn panel you'll see. Uh, for this uh, development, we need uh, 29 parking spaces, and that's one per four seats. Uh, this parcel has got um, plenty of zoning um, required, so that is not an issue for us. We, so we plan on using the existing parking. So also part of the project, the uh, north elevation of the building is going to be developed. So that is going to be this elevation looking at the plan. Uh, just to introduce you to the space a little bit. So we're doing in the outdoor dining spaces here. This is going to be permeable pavers, which allow the water to infiltrate through um, to the subgrade. Um, we'll also be providing an outdoor container bar. This is seasonal. Um, so that's going to be in this space here. Uh, as well as we're proposing uh, additional bathrooms. So this is two male-female bathrooms, which is attached to the existing building, uh, which is which are seasonal as well, and that is just for use uh, for the outdoor space. For entertainment, we're looking to provide the bocce area here, as well as two lawn panels. Uh, right now, we're showing those as cornhole, but in 10 years, that may change to something else uh, recreational. Uh, planting, we're looking to provide a lot of shade trees throughout this parcel to provide some dining shade for the uh, patrons, as well as we're surrounding the plaza with uh, a hydrangea row in the front, as well as a holly uh, border around the parcel, uh, as well as an ornamental four-foot fence. And we are providing two um, gates, which allow for egress out. They have the emergency bar uh, on them, uh, which was requested by the fire department. So we're also seeking a liquor permit as part of this application for inside and outside. Uh, we will not be providing any storm drainage as we are um, providing the permeable pavers and the other areas are uh, pervious on site. Um, we did receive a few comments from the uh, engineering department. One was asking about an under drain. Um, so we're gonna look at to uh, remove that from the plan and that water will just infiltrate into the ground. 
um, police requested that we um, increase the fence along the parking lot side right here. So f to solve that issue, we're going to go to uh, six foot fence sections and increase the post size to a four inch and fill those with concrete, essentially making it a bollard, uh, essentially. So tonight with me, I have um, Mike Hamlin, who is here with the Hartford Restru Restaurant Group, as well as uh, Julia Lemming. She's the architect for the project. She uh, developed the um, facade improvements as well as the restrooms, and those are down here. The, have you received the uh, letter from the Connecticut Water Company? I, I know we got it. We did, yeah, we they got that tonight. some suggestions, I guess, I don't know. They had some suggestions on there where I guess they want to see the plans or no. hadn't seen them. Okay, we can provide that to them. I just have a Thanks. question because there is parking behind the building and then you do have the access gate on the side. Are you, I'm just thinking that, you know, I'm, I can be pretty lazy. <laughs> hey, I admit I can be pretty lazy. And there's all this parking that I'm gonna have to walk or there, there's too much parking out in front. And, I'm, and if I went in the back, I could park back there, walk up and could, I mean, are you planning to do any kind of crosswalk? Because people will be crossing there in that back parking lot and also any kind of path so that they can come through from the back parking lot in front because there there's quite a bit of parking back there. Oh, I never know that. Yeah. I'm letting the whole you got to ride around. You got to ride around. <laughs> yes. But, okay. Yeah. So uh, great question. So I think our idea is that, uh, the rear parking would be reserved for employees um, and and so we would encourage all patrons to use the front, but I do understand that people could walk around. So this is a, there's a strip of lawn here, five feet wide. Um, and as far as access, these gates would be, um, they're really more for egress. So this one particularly would not be accessible to get into the, the property. We just have that emergency bar to get out. So you could potentially uh, enter the parcel from this front door. So I think parking in the back is certainly disadvantaged to you because you'd have to walk well, further, even so. if I were to walk around to the front and when I leave I could walk through that side gate out the back so I'm just thinking that there's the potential because there is quite a bit of parking back there that's available and brings you closer to the restaurant right and one of the other issues we might could speak to this a little bit more um, this parcel serving alcohol we have to control um, people moving within the site. So we want to, that's why we have the fencing and the gates as we do. So. Which I understand, but I'm just seeing that as a way of people coming in and possibly leaving. And there was tractor trailers that usually move, move through that back part. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. You just have to come in through the restaurant through the back if there's a way to do that. Okay. Is that side gate mandatory? Uh, correct. Yeah, the fire marshal said we needed uh, two access, two exit points. I would leave it grass because that's, it, it's going to make it, it, the minute you do something to make it like a walkway, people are going to use it. Leaving it grass, it's an emergency only. Nobody's going to want to walk. I understand what I you're saying. I see what you're saying, but once they, people see that gate, and they see all that availability in the back. It's not a, it's not a far stretch. That that's, that was one of my concerns. Is just a thought. Just you, seeing it. Can you gate it off in the back so they have to come forward? Well, or alarm that gate so that if they opened it, there was an alarm. On, I don't know. Um, we could look into gating this. I'll have to do some research into the agreements on the parcel. Um, having the Goodwill neighbor here so close, I'm not, I don't know if that would be acceptable then, but we could certainly look into that possibility. Thank you. Was, uh, most of our restaurants that we approve any outside dining on have to go through the restaurant to get there. So if they were going to come in the back, you'd have to have some kind of back access to the main restaurant in order, if they wanted to do that. You can't bring it into the drinking area. 
That's a one-way gate, Charlie. Uh, what I'm saying is right. they would have to come into the back of the restaurant itself that's right. and yeah. then go out that way. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a part of our ordinance, actually. You can't mm -hmm. go in there that, because of the liquor laws. Right. So if you wanted to make that advantageous to them, that's how you'd have to do it. You put it back access to the restaurant. Which we don't plan on doing, so it would be okay. exit only. So. Yeah, you gotta have a place you'd have you to don't go through the kitchen. Doing. Okay, so, kitchen. Well, I'm just saying that's the only legal way you can do it. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the commission? You, uh, you, you were ready to turn it over to your he, cohorts? He's here for questions uh, regarding programming. Um, he knows much more about how to run a restaurant than I do, so. <laughs> Any questions for for them from the commission before I open it to the, uh, the audience? And one more question. Okay. All right. I see that you're asking for outdoor entertainment, so I'm going to ask what kind of outdoor entertainment are we talking about? Um, you're not that far from um, residential areas. Yes, it is a commercial area where it is, but in reality, you're less than a half a mile from residential houses, so I have concerns about what your plan is for entertainment. Okay. Um, Michael Hamlin, 287 Chesterwood Terrace, Southington, Connecticut. Um, our, our plans for entertainment would be like acoustic or amplified music, but played on a, a lower level. So when we build our patios for our restaurants, we have a lot more speakers at a much lower volume. So none of the music would travel past the plaza itself. They'd still have to meet the uh, town requirements, too. But right. I'm just thinking right. that. No, that's. I mean, I can hear Riverside. Right. Absolutely. I can, too. Right. And that's about five miles. <coughs> so, yeah, at it's night, pretty good. sitting out there, well, it comes right down the river. And so uh, at all our restaurants, we have music on the patio. Um, but some of our restaurants, we have like condo complexes like 200 feet away. In Hartford, we have um, housing like literally above it, across the street, on every corner. So it's it's not played at a high level that it becomes an issue. Um, no Grateful Dead concerts or anything? Yeah, <laughs> no, no. No, I, I think that's like a... a, a up an issue when people think of outdoor patios and drinking that there's these huge parties and beer bottles being thrown and college you know frat parties or something but that we literally had patios for 17 years at our restaurant and I would implore you to call any police department and ask if there's ever been one complaint there's never been a complaint so it's a pretty casual environment your time of operations so, uh, 11 in the morning to 2 a.m. On Friday and Saturday, yes. What? I'm sorry, and that's seven days a week? The, well, Friday, Saturday is 11 to 2, and then during the week it's 11 to 1. Normally, you know, during the week the patio is pretty sparse by 9 o'clock, 9.30, and then on the weekends probably 12.30, 1. Is, uh, yeah, sorry. What do you consider your outdoor season? Um, I, what are I you would, looking well, at? If Mother Nature's nice to us, it's the middle of May to the beginning of October. Okay, just to kind of get an idea of what we're looking at season-wise yeah. and what your thoughts are. Right. Yes. I, I, I actually, I, I went by that facility, and I think that it's a great idea in terms of, you know, I think that, you know, we, we need some more of that type of, I guess entertainment while you're eating and, and some background music and, and whatnot. And, and I imagine that, you know, you, you can't play the music too loud only because people won't be able to carry on a conversation if most people, I think, go to a restaurant, you know, not to, you know, stare at each other, but to sort of talk about things. And hopefully, you know, depending on how long you've been married, maybe you, you don't now want to talk. But, I know. <laughs> you're in trouble now. <laughs> But but I I think it's it's a good idea and I think that you know it would be a good fit you know for our our town to have some additional you know See if his wife activities like that in in town. Yeah, because they have some games and things right. there. Yeah. 
Well, I think sure. that, you know, a lot of towns have, you know, they have Amazon, they have other places where they get they get business from, but a large reason that, you know, towns develop is that there's got to be some entertainment value because if you don't have any entertainment value, there's it makes it hard for people to go somewhere. So it will provide a place for people to come from other towns to actually come to Enfield to go and sit out on the patio and, and do things of that nature. Anyone else on the commission? All right. Is that, are you done uh, before I open it to the public? I'm good, thank you. Okay, anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Yes, ma'am, please come forward and name an address. <clears throat> Murray Pisner, 25 Roy Street. Um, I've been a member of the economic development for a couple of years now, and I have to say I am like super excited that Wood and Tap has chosen Enfield. Um, you know, it's great to see new businesses come into town and especially take over an empty site. You know, they're not building anything, they're taking over an empty site. Um, and I think the entertainment venue is great. I mean, it's something our town really can appreciate and use. And I agree with Mr. Hemmler that, you know, it's a draw for other people to come into the town. And that's always a good thing. Um, you know, one of the ways that we are going to lessen the tax burden in this town on our homeowners is by bringing businesses in. And this is a perfect example of a great business that wants to come in here, uh, redo a site that's empty, um, and make it desirable. So I am really hoping tonight that everybody has their I's dotted and their T's crossed and that we see Wooden Tap open sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Please come forward. <clears throat> Name and address. And Jonathan will blink 12 home lecture life. Um, I'm also in favor of this. I think it'd be great. Um, I've been to some of their other locations throughout the state of Connecticut, like Vernon and Hartford, and people of all ages, from me being a young adult to families with young kids, uh, the food, drink, and entertainment values uh, spot on what wouldn't tap. So I think it'd be a great thing. And uh, by the way, I love the idea of. Uh, of an outdoor venue with entertainment, like the games they were talking about, I think that's great too. Um, you know, you look at Google, you type in outdoor bar, it's a nice summer night, you type in outdoor bar in Enfield, only thing that really comes up is uh, Lulu's, so it'd be nice to get, nothing against Lulu's, but it'd be nice to get another, another option in town too. Uh, I think that'd be great, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in favor against the application? Anyone else who speak in favor against the application? Last call this evening to speak in favor against the application. Chair, I'll entertain a motion unless the applicant wishes to come forward again. Mr. Chair, I'd like to put forth the motion that we um, continue public hearing 294851 Palumbo Drive to our September 26th, 2019 meeting. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? It's unanimous. Secretary, please uh, take the roll and read the legal notice uh, for 1559 King Street. Okay. I'm sorry. 15. I got 59. Yeah, it's 12. Yeah, I said, the, yeah, but I give the address of King Street. Oh, okay. okay. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, September 12, 2019, at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Uh, public hearing 2949-1559 King Street, special permit application to allow warehouse, office, retail, and research laboratory operations along with the addition of four new loading docks, outdoor storage, and related site modifications. Baker Properties, LP, co-owner Oliver Goldstein, owner applicant, MAP 17, lot 39, SSD zone. Um, Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Ni Nicholas Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. 
Linda D. Gray will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. Gentlemen, again, names and addresses. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Attorney Paul Smith, 27 South Main Street, Windsor Locks, Connecticut, representing the applicant, Baker Properties uh, LP. To my right is Oliver Goldstein of Baker Properties, and to my left is Paul Vitaliano from VHB, the engineering firm. Are we all set up in the whatever? Okay. They were just setting up so we can, we don't have, I guess we can show it to you on the screen. Um, I've um, had the uh, opportunity to represent Baker Properties before this commission on a number of occasions regarding this property, um, this property on King Street, as you may remember, um, is basically uh, 1559 King Street is 17 acres with about 185,000 square feet of building space. Um, it used to be formerly years ago the Bernie's Warehouse. Um, it was vacant for a number of years. Baker Properties purchased the property in 2012. It's located in what's known as the uh, SDD zone um, in town. Um, with regard to the history since Baker's owned it, I mean, this property has, has a history that goes back to the 70s, but the more recent history is uh, Baker purchased it um, in 2012. Um, it was up until a short time ago um, fully leased. There was uh, 42,000 square feet leased to underwriter labs. They have, they've left, so that part of the premises is now vacant. 2015, we leased, um, Baker leased 57,000 plus square feet to all phase, which is an electrical distribution warehouse. Um, which is still there. 2016, we came before the commission to get approval to lease to A.H. Harris, which is a construction products and supply contractor. Um, they leased um, 80,000 square feet, most of which is warehouse and distribution center, about 3,500 square feet of office. Um, with A.H. Harris, we also did uh, 19,000 square feet of outdoor storage. Um, if, if you, the outdoor storage that you would see for A.H.A. Harris is up, oh, sorry. Yep, up right there. That's the that's the enclosure. Right there, where it is now. Yeah. And that's an enclosure up there. Um, so. At this point, um, Baker, working through Oliver, has tried to, we want to be proactive in terms of leasing the, the vacant 42,000 square feet plus space. And what I mean by that is we're actively talking and pursuing tenants, um, but there are a couple of things that he sees that, that tenants have questions about. One is they would like um, to, to know that they can have um, basically some loading dock space because you know each individual tenant looks to have their own loading space and maintain it and the second thing is is there a potential for outdoor storage so this is the current site as the yes. does this one show the uh, this is the current site That's yeah. The current. yeah we flip we have a map what we're showing we're proposing <laughs> And what you can see we've done, uh, Paul maneuvers it around is... Do you want me to explain it a little Yeah, if you'd explain what we're, we're proposing to do. But basically what I, what I did want the commission to understand is we don't have a tenant to put in, but the tenants that we're speaking to have an interest, A, in um, can we get loading dock space, and B, is there a potential for outdoor storage? So. We're proposing this under the special use permit. Ultimately, we'd have to come back to staff or commission and say, this is our new tenant and, and we want to go forward. But um, proactively, Baker thinks 
if he can say to a tenant, number one, yeah, we, we have permission to do loading docks here. And well, we where would you put the loading docks? You're showing us yeah, the same. There, we can show you on, on here, Mr. Chairman, and, and also the uh, outdoor storage. I know. I don't have my insurance yeah. in front of me. Please. Go ahead, Paul. I think that's the same. Could you take this? Yeah. The same picture you had. Thank you. Paul. What you're looking no, at. no, it is. No, it is not. It's changed a bit. Um, You've actually made a great point, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Paul Vitaliano. I'm a civil engineer at VHB. Um, I've actually been involved with this project since the early 2000s when it when it was um, the Bernie's property. I was the engineer for that, and you led me right into what I wanted to say. As you, as you can see, the the changes here are kind of minor. This plan is different than the previous plan we showed you, and I'll point out the the few changes um, that illustrate that. So, for starters. Um, as Paul mentioned, the loading docks are on this side right here. You can see here the outline of four trucks. So right now, this side okay. used to be the, um, back, the back in the day, it used to be where Bernie's actually had a retail, a retail store associated to the, to the warehouse. So there's a sidewalk there. There's a couple of staircases to lead into the building. Um, in the latest iteration, it was occupied by some office space and some laboratory space. So what we're proposing for, because of the internal layouts of the building and the current tenants and the future open space, um, a maximum of four docks in this location. In order to accommodate that, you could see that this used to be parking and it would no longer be parking. This area here, this island here, would now be striped and that's to allow the trucks to maneuver this way, yeah, come up here and back in, and then go this way. So basically what we're doing um, is two things. The loading docks here and outdoor storage enclosure here, which would be a fenced enclosure. The current plan show the same type of fencing that's out there now that you, if you don't miss it when you're driving the highway, it's a, it's a eight foot high white vinyl fence. And another enclosure here, right here. And both of these two enclosures um, occupy areas that currently are parking spaces. So what we've done by this application is, in essence, remove 97 parking spaces to accommodate this. And um, no, no increase to the building square footage, that, that kind of thing. When you look here in this area where the trucks are, um, as I mentioned, there's a concrete staircase right now. Um, we have, we'll have to modify that, so we show that staircase being cut back. Um, new railings added and ADA parking spaces moved to from where the enclosure is to this opposite side. Um, that ADA path now is right across the front um, to a um, chair lift because we couldn't accommodate a ramp um, because of the grades and the, the length of ramp needed. So we are proposing a chair ramp in that location and that's what this, this little square is right here. It's noted on your plans. Um, and basically from a site plan standpoint, that's really it. Um, we did make up for the loss in green space because there's a couple of islands that get removed, NCAP islands. We're actually going to this, this parking area that's all the way here by King Street, and we're taking an equivalent amount of square footage and making it green. So that's kind of this green patch that you see out here. It's taking pavement and making that green. Um, also, we're losing four trees because of the islands. junk up in there. And the, the trees that we're losing, we're going to replace in this location here. Uh, there's actually more trees here. I think I don't know if this is an older aerial or what, but this is actually all tree because of our last application, but there's room for four more. So in essence, some of the key points to point out is that we did not increase any impervious area by doing this. We lost the 97 parking spaces. We did not lose any trees. We're keeping the same number of trees. Um, and we're doing those improvements that I mentioned. And there's only one light pole that gets affected. It's basically moving 20 feet to the left. And we're going to put a couple of lights over the docks that are just shining down for safety and lights over, over the doors. And that's, that's basically the extent of the improvements. Questions for the commission? Kenny? Um, does outside storage, does it have to be connected to the building? Um, it's actually it's actually not connected to the building um, in these two spots. The other the current ones are are um, right now we're proposing that they're not. Um, and actually, if they were connected to the building, it it would be a little more complicated, at least for this top one here. Um, this one here possibly could, it could with a gate. Sidewalk. 
Well, you know, that, those, those no, questions. I'll clarify. I don't. I don't care if they're connected. Oh, okay. Well, I actually, I see this building, and you guys have done great with it. I mean, you took a building that was empty for oh, years. Sure, right. It looks great. I want to keep it that way, and I consider your building is the entrance to Enfield, coming down 91. It's very visual from the highway, and I'm just concerned by putting the storage in front of the building along the 91 corridor it might become an eyesore because once we approve i outdoor storage it's approved you know now it's going to be you know policing it and does it look good and what i'm getting at is you know i i think it would be more aesthetically appealing if where you're putting your new green buffer in that corner of the old parking lot if you could utilize that as outside storage because it's low so when you're driving down route five you won't see it oh, you're right. it's and right. when you're driving down 91 it's all treed off already the loading docks i don't have any issue at all i mean i hope you guys have all the success in this building and it looks like you're heading that way that's my concern with the outside storage is where it's located because it is so visual well, we, we thank you for the, the comments and the compliments, obviously, to the building. If I could just, and Oliver, you could chime in too, but if I could address that. Obviously, our, our thought process with with um, putting these here is that as we initially started to answer your question, we, we kind of assume that our tenants are going to want that storage in their proximity. Um, this isn't, you know, but obviously, as we said, we're talking to tenants that kind of this isn't really their, it's their merchandise, really, and their product. So it's not like storage to go use once a month or something like that. Um, when you look at like what A.H. Harris does, they're connected internally because they're in and out of that. They're selling that every day. Now, um, that is an eight foot high white vinyl fence. When you drive by now, and as I was coming up now, um, you know, every time I drive by, I take a look and it's really, you really don't see anything. Um, and this fence would be the same. Obviously, if the tenants come in and want something different, we come back here and discuss it. Um, this, this parking lot out here, we feel it is pretty far and we don't think the tenants would really really want that obviously if we meet the right tenant and they're a common you know or um, want that then we could discuss it but right now from the people that we have talked to they do want their storage in proximity and we feel the eight foot high fence is a pretty pretty good screen yeah I mean, it's it's right next to the existing storage which again from the highway is is not really very visible because the fencing is so high and so it would sort of be a continuation of that and there is some screening in front of it Commissioner Nelson, if you see, you know, where the island is, mm -hmm. there's some trees right in there. So it, we, don't, we don't think it'll, either one would negatively impact sort of the the, the building. It, I mean, it is a big facility, you know, it's a big structure and it's yeah, it And this one, on, in this location, you, you definitely don't see that southbound. Yeah. You don't see that at all. When you go northbound, as I was checking tonight, you know, I peeked over and like, by the time you get to here, you kind of see this, you can see this door you see some of this, but you really wouldn't see this um, this in, in its entirety because you really don't see this corner of the parking lot that well. And if here. you did, we do feel that you really would be looking at a white fence. Are we allowed to have eight-foot fences in Enfield? I thought six-foot was the max. Right. Yeah, we, we, we've done eight-foot eight, eight foot because it, it, it's, it's not a, uh, you know, a boundary line fence. Okay. It's a security fence within the property. Okay. So again, you're not sort of, you know, your neighbors aren't being it's, affected yeah, by yeah, putting a tall residential. fence next to them. And the, it is different. And the detail that you do see on these current plans set is the same detail that was approved for what it's worth that was approved a few years ago. Yeah. And, and, That's the only question okay, I have. Okay, Rick. Go ahead. Cause when, when you, in, in, in lieu of a white vinyl fence, would it be preferable to have something that was a little more neutral? You know, to me, you know, white stands out pretty bright in terms of, you know, and, and if we're trying to sort of, because I, I know we, we've done things where like right. if you choose a neutral color, it sort of blends into the background or something that blends into the building colors systems rather than white. I think the, the fence we currently have is actually cream. Yeah. White, cream, or yeah. yeah. It, it does, it does, I mean, if you go look at the facility, it blends in very well. You, even driving down, you don't sort of notice it right away. You have to look for it. And, and I've driven down it a lot of times, and I know the fence is there, and I've never seen it. But, you know, just to address a, a possible concern that, yeah. you know, I, I know that, you know, sometimes, you know, if, if it's less noticeable or less, you know, bright, it doesn't necessarily catch your eye. If it blends into the background, it sort of, you know, sort of disappears in, into the, you know, the, the function of the building. So 
in that sense, you know, I probably would say that you know, it would be preferable to, to match, a, a, again, a color that's consistent with what the building type is so that it, it, it sort of blends in a lot for better rather than white against but stay. Yeah, and, and basically you're, you're maybe I, I'm trying to see if what the colors noted on the plans, I have a small version in front of me and my eyes are not what they used to be. But um, <laughs> I remember having this conversation last time with the commission and I believe that we did pick something slightly different to match the banding that's on the building. So um, I, re I recall having this conversation when we came up with the color last time. I believe Oliver, Oliver is correct. That's not exactly white, but yeah, because I could, was down there and the even the driving line. through yeah. there, the you don't even. It's not like in your face. It just kind of looks like part of the building. Supposed to watch where you're driving. Not where you're uh, that too. <laughs> not a you know, not here, here. Yeah. yeah. What does it say? Color somewhere. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, I thought you wanted to make the motion. Go ahead. Let's put this. Way. I think you're right. It's not white. Look first. Cream. Yeah. I mean, I, my, I think what I would say is, what we, what we already have existing works, and we would probably match it with that. That would make the more, most sense because mm. if you, even if you decided to change to a completely different color, I now you got two contrast fences. Two different colors. So I think it. I think it would work. I mean, what we have works, so I would say, you know, it should match the existing fencing that's there. That would be my sort of take on it. Mm -hmm. hey, Mary. I guess my comment would be, um, first off, I, I understand where you're coming from, Ken, about where the storage and stuff is, but I do believe that it makes more sense for it to be next to the other storage, just for access, but also, too, for aesthetics reasons, because you, I mean, I come on and off that exit all the time, because I'm always there, and I look through, and you can sometimes see that vinyl fence there, but it blends, and it's just going to be an extension and more blending, and with the with the vegetation there, it does really help, and I think in some ways, having that close to the building is a good thing, as long as the colors match, that's what's more most important in my mind. Because then it doesn't, you know, show a difference in it. But um, but yeah, no, I I think that as long as it does that, I think it's good. Anyone else, commission? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor against this application? Anyone in the public would speak in favor against this application? Last call to speak in favor against the application. All right, Mary, are you going to make the? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we continue public hearing 2949-1559 King Street to our September 26, 2019 meeting. Second. Motion's made, seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? No abstentions, unanimous. Thank you very much. And and again, we apologize that it had to get postponed till next meeting, so. Not a problem. Thank you. One of us, at least one of us will be here. <laughs> Secretary, Paul, please. Paul, you need to be here. Yes, Secretary, sir, please read the legal notice <laughs> and the uh, big box. <laughs> the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a so public he hearing at their next regular meeting on Thursday, September 12, 2019, <clears throat> at 7 p.m. Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application Public Hearing 2950. 34 Burnham Street special permit application to expand a non-conforming yep. home to add a breezeway and a two-car garage Gary Johnson owner applicant map 52 lot 235 R33 zone Charles Duran here Charles Ladd here Nicholas Lefakis here Mary Scott here Ken Nelson here Linda DeGray here Guillermo Salazar here and Richard Suzak is here Linda DeGray will be sitting in for the missing oh, commissioner. Uh, I with my husband. <laughs> welcome. And uh, <clears throat> again, if you name an address, for, just for the record. Gary Johnston, 34 Burnham Street, Enfield. And uh, if you would just briefly explain uh, what it is you're proposing. Um, my wife and I have lived there for 33 years. We're getting up in our years and my wife is handicapped, so we felt the need to build a garage so she could safely enter our home. During all these years, I've spoken to many of my neighbors. No one ever has made mention of any fact that our lots are not conforming legal lots. Isn't that something that you should be raised when you purchase a home here? 
Furthermore, if you grandfathered the non-conforming lots, why wouldn't you also grandfather the setbacks that were enforced at the time they were built? I had two contractors look at this project, and the only concern either had was the distance to my neighbor's property line. I signed a contract, and while the contractor worked on the drawings, I prepared the area where the garage was to go. This involved taking down a gazebo in the pool deck it was sitting on, cutting down bushes and several arborvitae trees, removing an 8 by 30 area of pavers, and removing a 10 by 30 deck attached to my house. My yard is now a disaster. Imagine my frustration when my contractor con notified me that the plan was rejected. It was actually rejected for two reasons, but I'm only here because of the setback. Out of curiosity, I walked down my street to get some numbers. Of 62 homes on Burnham Street, 44 have garages and two have carports. Additionally, I don't recall ever seeing a sign in front of anyone's property like the one in front of mine. Regardless of your decision, I will remain unhappy that I spent about $375 and lost four weeks of project time. Had I known what I was going to be subjected to, I would have opted for a for sale sign instead of a premises subject to a public meeting sign. Thank you for your time. Sir, for your knowledge, uh, that is included in our packet. And uh, if you would explain to us uh, the, the type of building you want. Is it a two-car garage? Uh, it's a two-car two garage with a breezeway. Questions from the commission? I've done a lot of building in that neighborhood. and. I didn't realize they were non-conforming front yard setbacks either. I've never had to do a public hearing on it, so. We've had others, I, I believe, in the past out in that area. With it. But, I mean, I, I'm going to say it right now. I'm a firm believer the house was built that way, the whole street's built that way. He's not increasing the encroachment at all. I'm good. I mean, and again, it's sad that they got to well, come I, back yeah, in two weeks and... I would like to ask for just is, identify yourself I don't believe you did okay yes. I'm Terry Lynn okay. could you speak into I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> move out of the way honey <laughs> you know it moves <laughs> it does move okay. well he moves too oh, okay I'm uh, Terry Lynn Johnston and um, I'm Mr. Johnston's wife oh, um, I need to I really need to have this I have one leg so I did take my leg off in front of those folks. I'm sorry, but I was upset. It's very difficult for me in the winter or in, in, in bad weather because I can't feel where I'm walking. So I could walk out of my house and go, bam, I'm down like that because I can't feel. I'd, and if I land on an icy spot, now, I'm always looking at my feet when I'm walking, but sometimes you miss it. It's even in my house. You know, if there's a little bit of water, I could go down, bam, like that. I need to have this before this, this bad weather comes. I'm 60 years old. I'm recently retired, and I would like to ask for a reasonable ADA accommodation to be able to go forward with this before the bad weather comes it's going to be bad enough with construction anyways if we do get approved but i would like to ask for an ada accommodation that we not be delayed until the next meeting and i do have to add also that, and and this isn't um i'm not saying enfield is a horrible place but i was very surprised when i called later and i called to the town of enfield and they did not, you may have an ADA coordinator, but it wasn't known to the town of an ADA coordinator for the public. Um, the only person they knew of was ADA for employees. So that's one thing that I would suggest through all of this is that you do appoint somebody as an ADA coordinator who can address these type of issues, and, and that's all I have to say. 
Yes, go ahead. I Anna. have a question for staff, and, and this would probably go to the town attorney. Seeing that they are asking for a reasonable accommodation, and and because of that, and I do know housing laws, so I don't know, does it actually have to be a public hearing? I understand that there's a setback issue here, but because they're asking for the ADA. Um, ADA and, only is in in the, in this situation, yeah. that would have to go through. Um, yeah, the town attorney. Mm -hmm. The attorney. Uh, yeah. That if we would have to wait until. The you next you week. know, I have a question in terms of you know I agree with, with Commissioner Nelson in terms of you know if, if the lot is not conforming, it's been always not conforming. It was always there before we changed our regulations, and our regulations changed. You know consistently and and the, and if it's grandfathered you know i would think that even administrative review it, the approval would approval, be in, yeah. in order Absolutely. rather than yep. have exactly. to sit here for another Absolutely. you know two weeks I, i'm saying that you know we should just make a motion to allow them to approved. have administrative approval, approval yeah. for yeah. their approval. application because there's really no need for them to be here you know it's, it, it it is sometimes you know it's the letter of the law but i think that sometimes we really have to use a little bit of common sense exactly. so I think yeah. we also need to get an opinion from well I don't I don't I, I don't I, well, the thing is if, if we allow for administrative approval you know it, it's it, after it, they get an I, I'm yeah. just saying is let's not do something right. that's illegal is ADA only for public buildings no no, no. it is for not public, may no. I add okay. I've done civil rights work I just retired for the state of Connecticut for the past 16 years. And I do realize that, I think it's Ms. Witten was in touch with HUD at the local office, but the local office, I'm not sure what was said. She thought it meant for ramps. Yes. But it doesn't mean just ramps. I've been in touch with <clears throat> the Boston Office of Civil Rights for HUD and um, I've been working with them. So what I would really like to do is just to be able to have this accommodation. It's a reasonable accommodation. It doesn't cost you any money. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd just like to add that, you, you know, the, the thing is, you know, normally you're in trouble with the law if somebody objects to what you've done. And, you know, the thing is, I think that it is, if everybody is on board that, you know, it, it is a reasonable request that, you know, there should be never anybody who's ever going to, you know, invoke, you know, the fact that we've broken the law to accommodate a, a, a you know, a disabled person that, you know, I think that, you know, it, it's very reasonable what we're saying and, and that if we break the law to, to do that, you know, maybe the law is wrong. And that's all I, I don't think to, you're. I don't, I don't think, think you're not going to break a law. I, I know. That's what I'm you're saying. Not, I don't think that we're breaking the law. You're not, you're not is, breaking any law. What no. I'm asking for is. We're not. We're, and let me clarify what I'm saying is, is because they're not conforming, they're obviously here for a public hearing. My question is, is seeing that they're asking for a reasonable accommodation that we forego the public hearing and give it administrative approval Absolutely. with the blessing of the town, town attorney. attorney. I don't want to just jump forward and mm -hmm. go, oh, let's just do this. And then it could have put us at risk. Come, right. Something well, come back. Well, other decision, be wrong. Again, you know, I, I'll make that motion now in terms of, you know, I think that, you know, we should allow this application be, to be administrated, you know, approval with the fact that the town attorney be, you know, questioned as to whether, you know, it's, it's appropriate for us to do that. Second. Go ahead. So looking at the plan, if they were to shift the garage and the breezeway back, within the new building line, would they have had to have paid the $300 to come to planning and zoning? And they wouldn't have to have a public hearing. They wouldn't have to have anything. They'd be approved through the building department. You guys would sign right off on it. No, except, for, except for lot coverage. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't explain the whole situation to you. Mm -hmm. So what transpired was there was a building permit submitted. Mm -hmm. And believe me, none of us, or neither I nor anybody, takes satisfaction and, or any pleasure in saying denying a, a permit. 
So when the permit came in, like every other permit that I have to look at, there was too much lot coverage on the existing. And all the permit said was uh, 575 square foot garage and uh, 200 square foot breezeway and didn't say anything else. Um, so when I looked at the plans attached to it, that's basically all it had on there. So then when I looked at the lot, it's a non-conforming lot in size, there was too much lot coverage. Um, there was a deck that showed up, there was the in-ground pool, there were two sheds, and a gazebo showed up on the aerial. We didn't, it wasn't even accounted for on, on the assessors. So it was over. And the knowledge or the, uh, that anybody was handicapped or anything like that was never, never known, never brought up at that time. So um, I come in that it, was, day. It, was it was denied based on that. On lot coverage. On lot coverage in the, uh, excuse me, the setback. Mm -hmm. um, so Mr. Robertson came in, I believe the next, the next day or maybe later that same day, I can't remember. And I explained it to him. And um, I was also in contact with the builder. And when the builder submitted the plans, it was actually uh, more, hundred, more than 775 square feet. It was 816, I think, or 846 square feet of addition. And we had correspondence, and I was correct in that, according to the builder. And uh, Mrs. Robertson came in, discussed it with, the, uh, with Laurie. And again, Mr. Robertson came in again on Wednesday, I believe, Following that, we gave him a couple uh, ways of either remove a shed or make the addition smaller to satisfy the lot coverage. And uh, the last permit that you have here, or application that you have before you, is a reduction in the size that would accommodate that. But the idea of just allowing it over the lot coverage, that becomes a slippery slope. So if we do it for 60 square feet, which would have entailed here, then the next one's going to be 100 square feet or 200 square feet. So if you only go by the, the regulations that you have in front of you, of course, some people are not going to be happy, but it's difficult sometimes just to um, try to accommodate people just because they're only a few feet over. So we try to do it evenly and according to everyone involved and everybody that applies. Just so there isn't any question that we're giving it to one person and not to another for any reason. So in many cases with ramps, uh, anything like that, I've done several of them where they actually go into the 50 foot, uh, I'm sorry, the 15 foot setback. But we make allowances for those uh -huh. um, just because of that, re uh -huh. that reason. So. You know, like I said, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't discuss and explain to you the whole situation. And they were here simply because it's a special permit because of what the regulations say, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason they're here. Well, now, the, lock, the lock coverage definitely has to be followed. Mm -hmm. And I also had an in-ground pool, and they used it against me, too, which I thought was BS, but I had to follow it, too. Um, but you corrected the lock coverage, so we're not, that's not a challenged issue now. As far as handicapped accessible and stuff like that, nobody can stop you. But you can't claim a garage and a breezeway for uh, handicapped accessibility. Yes, you can. For a reason. I've done this work. I'm an ADA coordinator. Okay. I am an ADA coordinator. Okay. So then your attorney can come in and tell us you don't have to have Abs a public hearing. Absolutely. Okay, and unless you, unless maybe that's what you should have done then. Because we're I trying did. to work I with said, you, and I'm telling you, yeah, you can't go and build anything you want to build wherever you want to build and cry ADA. That's not what I said, sir. And what you are saying is very discriminatory. I am not crying ADA. I never have. You just did this whole meeting. I did not cry ADA. I'm saying why I need this garage. We understand why you need it, but I you need can't go around the regulations because I am of not it. going around the regulations. We submitted a permit. Mm -hmm. They said it was disapproved. 
And I went to them, I said, I need this. They were there, this young lady was, this gentleman was, I didn't meet you though. You, I think you met my husband. I told them, I need to have this. I have to have it, unless you want me traipsing down my driveway. And if it's denied, I can file a complaint with HUD. And I've been speaking with them. I do not want to go down this route. What I'm asking for, we've taken down, we're going to take down the shed. I want reasonable, safe access to my home. And don't you ever dare say that I'm using my disability to go around the regulations. I'm not the one who said it. You did. You did. You said you're you handicapped, you have one leg, and that's why you have to have the garage. That's why I have to you have You brought it. it up, not me. Exactly, right. but you're not. So I'm telling you, we'll, ramps and everything else, absolutely, we cannot we, deny you. But you, you can't go and start trying to change regulations. I, I'm not, uh, I don't want all right, to. Let's, all right, uh, I'm asking for an accommodation so I can get this done <clears> quickly <throat> before the winter starts. I'm not asking okay. you to change a regulation. Okay, but the mo the discussion on the table is what uh, I, I guess the motion what Linda I guess it had brought up and how how do you want to handle it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can discuss whether they need a two car garage or a one car garage, but that uh, she's meeting every they're meeting all the requirements with the elimination of one uh with the deck and all that well with the deck i guess the gazebo it doesn't or it didn't count before yeah. and the uh one shed oh, so we're shed. meeting everything except the setback mm -hmm. yes and, and, it, and, and again, it's, it, it's not conforming and the setback was always there you know possibly prior to you know the regulations well, the setback is there and it's for the rest of the street correct, i mean correct. if you do this you're going to have the problem all the way along with everything that goes in up there right. yeah they change the regulation well let's right. have well, you can't do it for just that street no. that's right. a problem right if uh, i may Linda. um so we did talk to the town attorney. Um, they advised us that all of the public hearings that were on this legal ad, including unfortunately this one, um, if you do uh, choose to vote on them, they are ultimately null and void. So even if you do vote on them, um, they advised us that even our office couldn't sign off on the building permits. Um, and that is that is from our town attorney. And I again, it's. It was an unfortunate uh, circumstance that occurred. Um, if you do want to go forward with this administrative approval route, um, we certainly can uh, talk to the town attorney about that. Um, if they don't think that that is um, something that, uh, that can go forward in that manner, then we can certainly put it back on the agenda. That, that would so, be my thought with it. Why don't we, we try that, to that, that would route. be, yeah. uh, if we if we go with uh, administrative approval with the approval of the town attorney mm -hmm. as linda suggested just checking uh and they say it's all right because i don't see why we can't say this is off the the agenda agenda because it didn't shouldn't have been here what do you mean it should be well, here because of the front yard setback well, this front, well Yes, yes, it should yeah, be. Okay. The regulations do say that it is a special permit to approve this. Um, I mean, if you want to say in your motion that it's an administrative approval as a reasonable accommodation with yes. the approval of the town attorney. Yes. Yeah. Again, it's it's really going to come down to what the town attorney advises us. Well, you could call them and notify them whether they came back or not, or whether we could have done that. Well, I think, not. didn't Rich, didn't we say that? And you Correct. did your motion a minute ago. So when we did that emotion, we did ask for that a reasonable mm -hmm. accommodation, re no. you know, mm -hmm. and with the approval of the town I attorney. Don't know if we can. That's it. I, well, that's she, she's got pretty clear instructions from the town attorney yeah, we did. telling her not to sign those papers. Mm -hmm. and but this is a different route. This is an, author this is, this is an administrative uh, authorization, which is totally different. Mm -hmm. but we're bypassing the public yeah, hearing, the, which is our was, regulation. It was all in the legal. It's been in the paper, and it has to go in again. Uh, so I'm you just, got to cover I'm that. I was just throwing it out there. Well, if we can try. Can that way, I don't know if, if you know. the attorney agrees with the administrative approval. Well, I hope all their neighbors are watching this, and they come to the next meeting complaining because yeah, it's BS. Know. they got to pay $300 for 
when their house was built that way. It's been that way since I, day I agree. one. But again, I, yeah, uh, this is some. Uh, this is. I want it right because you're right. saying That's if it I'm doesn't asking. work, then they can come back. They've already yeah. wasted this but much. But they're going to have to. Right. Either so way, let them come back in two weeks. They're done. I, I'm pretty sure they're going to get the go ahead. Sorry, you got to wait two weeks. I still want to know who screwed that up because we have, they're the fourth well, person now. Can I tell you, I consider this as retaliatory. And I put in my letter How, to them. You're not the only one, though. It was everybody tonight. And again, I apologize. I realize that, but you're not, you're not listening to what I'm saying. When you ask for reasonable accommodation, you cannot retaliate to me it looked like retaliatory behavior i well, was in there well no again asking well let's no stop, but, uh, but i'm just stop that and just yeah. forget it we're trying to help you and throwing or accusing people the staff or anybody else the town the town employees are all here to downstairs We're all here to, to try to help you, I, I and, so. and without any zoning or, or this, there, <clears throat> well, it, it would be hectic in, in all the neighborhoods. It seems uh, the regulations read w this way, and it was our area to determine them. And that's what we're trying to do, and we're trying to work with you. Well, I would just like to say well, that all of uh, But every, if I think if we stay off street, of accusations, we'll get along a lot further. Now, I think, uh, I, I think really Kenny's right. As far as my instructions were that they were public hearings, they have to be re-advertised in order to make everything legal for anything that we would do. Unless we can mess them up even further than they're Absolutely. messed up now, without having this this the other hearing, I would say the same thing: is is wait the two weeks, and everything would be okay. It's it's not the town's fault. The newspaper actually didn't notify the town that they had to get their ads in earlier. There was, was no notification. It was a holiday. Okay, so I just wanted on the record that I'm being denied this reasonable You are not, ma'am. It's been on the record. I told you your letter is here. His accusations are here. His appeal to the town attorney is all here. It's all in the records. The records will stay here forever, I guess. We're not denying anything. We're not denying anything. We can't do anything legally. We can't deny or approve anything tonight. It was because of the holiday, the Journal Enquirer didn't get the ad in on within proper time frame. When was it submitted? Um, I don't doesn't know. Matter. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't matter, it, but it could have been submitted on time. If the, the town had been notified right. there was a change in their re, in the publication dates, then it would have been in on time. But we're not denying. Or <clears throat> There's a normal anything. time that they have to put in. The state regulations require, yes. oh, I forgot, 10, 10 days prior to the hearing. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. It has to be exactly 10 days. Well, it could be more. Yes. Right, but it can also be according to the law. You can, you can um, approve a reasonable accommodation. You can. Ma'am, yes, it. that's right. But this, okay. but this is a public hearing. But this is a public hearing. That's fine. I'll let okay. it go. Uh, can we? Um, that's what I've been asking you to please do, and that's all we've been talking about here. Charlie, I just. We have a motion on the table. Uh, we need to either withdraw that motion or vote on that motion. Well, that's it. I know that. Yeah. Thank no. you. From what I'm hearing. Excuse me. From from what I'm hearing is is that if we actually act on this, we might be jeopardizing them from the being approved thing. even quicker so that you know in that in that sense i will withdraw my motion but you know i i think I'll that i have to have the second withdrawn also i withdraw my second okay the, then the only let's thing... go please have another motion to postpone Could continue. continue mr chair i'd like to make a motion that we continue public hearing 295035 burnham street to our september 26 2019 meeting second any discussion Hearing none, all in favor. 
I'm opposed. All right. We're trying to help you the best could I, we can. Could I bring one, one point? Uh, Ken Nelson brought up a very good point that I would like to see happen. It should get changed so that setback goes back to whatever the setback was when those homes were built. Nobody should have to go through what we're going through. I, I just want to be clear. You guys have all the right in the world to be upset and be pissed off. I would be too. I understand you're trying to beat the weather. I understand your situation. No, but you don't. Forget it. But see, that's right there. That Please, attitude let's, right let's there stop is what creates it. a problem. The motion's made and it's done. Uh, people are upset. That there's no need to get upset with this commission or, or the people of the town employees. Maybe, uh, you know, well, let's leave so it there. What's the next agenda, item? I think we're done. Uh, I don't know. Well, they, you can show up at the next meeting. I, I don't know how they'll, they'll vote, but it doesn't sound like it would be disapproved. But I'm not going along with saying that. I don't know. That's, so that's my, it's continued, and we'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see where we're going, please. Correspondence. Correspondence. Uh, correspondence. Uh, you have a notification of uh, 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 20 Bailey Road. I uh, I don't know how much solar we get. This is just a reconnect uh, connection of the of CLNP's distribution section out there to, yeah. to, to what's already going to be built on uh, 83 or whatever. Yeah, the, on the former uh, Jarmok Farms, uh, they want to put that uh, large solar array that's going to the Connecticut Siding Council. And I see um, it's underground, it says. Yep. And uh, the, it, it really was just uh, alerting you guys that the, um, the hearing would be held today at one and we haven't heard anything back as far as I know today nope not yet so <laughs> we'll keep you posted okay uh, the other thing is and it was in your uh, oh, let me find it. on your, your book was a request from uh, people to me and what my object in having it here uh, one was uh, letters like this, and I don't know if you were also contacted. This was a letter to me, and I had it distributed, distributed to you. Uh, items like this, you give it over the phone and say, thus and so is your opinion of it. You put yourself, or put the commission in a, in a bind. Uh, that's why I sent this down Normally, I'd say, would you answer this to, uh, like, to Jennifer? Would you what answer this? What are we talking about? Charlie, it's a letter that was, oh, well, it was enclosed, the letter to me. I thought it was enclosed with you. Uh, to um, you. You're talking about the letter The letter, from, right. Um, about the intersection. Right, right. On, right. The subdivision regulations. regulations. Yes. Yes. And it's just, it's just, be careful. No, I, I, it goes directly to them. Okay, I, I don't know if Didn't this had been it. around. Okay, yeah. nope. I didn't know if the rest of you had been called. No, no, nope. no. Okay, no. Nope. All right. Well, nope. we discussed that with um, Lori and with uh, John Cabibbo, the um, assistant town engineer, and they felt that they could respond to it if that was okay. Yeah. Um, well, they can. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> no, I've got it. It's fine. And, and you could too. I just uh, know it's out there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, the administrator, any further contact? Um, you did receive the uh, sample medical marijuana regulations for commission review. Um, we figured we'd let you guys um, uh, read it over and we can discuss it at a 
different time or today? Do you want us to sample medical marijuana? No. (laughs) (laughs) She said it. Uh, Just one question is, has the council given their view on um, how the council feels about regulating medical marijuana facilities or god forbid they allow recreational marijuana i mean really i'm sorry but i am against marijuana use so i'm going to be my personal opinion don't care about what anybody else thinks i think it's a gateway drug but that's my personal opinion so um we have i i'd like to hear what the council's feeling is before we proceed to go oh yeah let's do this the only the only reason i ever put it in was because uh, when we first had the uh uh, oh the the the, the, i was gonna say the club like up next to mcdonald's came in and there was another one came in across from uh uh bigelow (laughs) and it hit like a ton of bricks and i we had Attorneys and oh, oh, the adult the stores. Adult stores. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the adult took stores. Me a there. <laughs> and I didn't want to get caught and hit it again with, <laughs> with the problems that we had to go through at that time, and be ready for something of this type that might be coming along also, because we did have quite a, quite a time with that back, back at that time. And uh, Freedom of didn't want to go through it. Actually, and the store up there was not where we preferred to have it. And you've never had really any problems since. No, it's been we haven't. There. But, uh, but again, uh, I think we, we just need didn't to want to go through. Feel on how our council feels about this. No, I do. Because uh, it is. I mean, technically, it's still illegal. It's a fe- it, federally, it's still illegal. And I noticed the other day that Springfield is uh, choosing PS. Yeah. Yeah. So it may be moved at this point. We also have to be proactive and we have to take a look at what there is out there, other towns and what they're doing. And I really think it's important that we do take a look at it and we see. I understand, but and I'm I, just and I think I'd that like oh. I'm, I'm more concerned. I'm not sure about the council, really, because, you know, we have the ability as the Planning and Zoning Commission to have, you know, put regulations in place. I think if it comes to the council, they will let us know what their feelings are as individuals. Well, they can come to the hearing. They can come, exactly, and they can have an opinion if they have an opinion. And I'm not saying either way how I feel about it, but I think that it's important too that I don't know if that's necessary for us as a commission to have that opinion. Um, So, you know, for me, I think it's more, we have to do, I think, what's best for the community and putting regulations in place because this is maybe what's coming down the road, so. Regardless of your personal opinion. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree, but I, I, I'd it's like to. It's illegal for the yeah. council to tell us how to vote. It Absolutely. Is. I'm not You're asking right, how the council to tell us to how to vote. I would just like an opinion on how they feel because they have a better, tu- they're more touch with the no, people yeah. than, um, this, this board, that's all. I'm just, I mean, uh, I understand. I understand. No, I just, we can certainly reach out to the town manager's office to um, see if the council has sort of weighed in on those types of uses. Yeah, that's all. I'm surprised they haven't called us and said do so. We'll probably but... will tonight. <laughs> 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 all right. Right. We're, We're going to get a few phone calls. <laughs> probably, but it's all right. I'd rather Okay, call. let's move on. I, I'm surprised we've done this early. Uh, applications to be received. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Administrative approvals. Oh. Wait, you missed the commissioner's correspondence. Oh. Well, I, I thought that we did. There was, there's two of them. <laughs> the one was the... Uh, that was correspondence, not commissioner. Okay, well, what, okay, what have you got? <laughs> I don't have anything. I'm just saying. Oh, oh I do, oh, have, I do have something. I do have something. See, all right, Mary, go first. Um, <laughs> Wondering when we're the plan of conservation and development, and if we're going to start doing like workshops, things like that. How's that? Are we? Does there a plan in place? What's what's the situation? What's going on for that? I believe money was allocated uh, for that. Um, that's really uh, probably sort of better from, wait now until the co- commission is reappointed or unappointed, because it'll be some of us yeah. not here. 
Um, I believe Lori is sort of starting to try and get a plan in place, so. Um, okay. Yeah. I, yeah, it's important, I think, because as we're moving into this, we really, it, it's a lot of work and it needs to be oh, started, is. the and process. I, yep. We're remiss in not doing exactly. it. Exactly. We are behind the, the, the ball, and I the think, zoning in some regulations, ways. too, are wor even worse. Exactly. But. So, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's something I've been yelling about for a number of years. Nick just wanted to say something. 30 plus. <laughs> Nick, okay. Yeah, my, my understanding is uh, the, the governor is going to be coming to town t to look at is it economic development and so on? Uh, yeah, yes, on October 24th, there is a, a breakfast at the Snunta College. Uh, September, in, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, September, I'm sorry, yes. September 24th. It's this month. And it, it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, I think, and it's going to run till 10.30 <coughs> or something like that. And the governor is the keynote sm spokesperson. <laughs> Smokes person. <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, uh, yeah. So, so, well, uh, all right. So, a breakfast is planned. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. Because uh, the thing I was going to suggest is that um, maybe he could be invited to a, a breakfast place in Thompsonville that we have, um, where there's business downstairs, residents upstairs, and it exhibits the vision we all have for the improvement of Thompsonville. Uh, Marks. Marks, yeah. I was going to say Marks would be the one. Yeah. But, but if, if there are plans, I, I can't disrupt Yeah, the I, plans. I think that, that they're very, they're, it's been very well received from what I understand is that there, there's a lot of re response and there's going to be a lot of participation so that, you know, we probably would need, a, again, a relatively large venue. Yes. Um, so <laughs> that, you know, I think there's booths that are being pre presented and, and and all kinds of information that would be available and it is you know sponsored by the Economic Development Commission and I should have spoken up a lot sooner but um, but but yes that that is in, in the progress and it so will happen do you think it's September. beneficial for 24th for both all us I, I am members to I, go? I, I am attending in terms of okay. you know but because you know I am a part of the yes, economic exactly. commitment but I, it probably would be I think that you know anything anytime we can get the governor to, to come into town and 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 we could sort of express our opinions or he might have an answer and question period afterwards so that we can sort of you know sort of pick now his brain about the medical marijuana what's <laughs> happening so would would he be touring any parts of town? I, I doubt it. You, you know, I think mm -hmm. that he has you know a certain time period. You know, it, it's you know I think that you know he has a lot of different air places that he could go, and and that the fact that you know we might not always agree with his policies, and that he's willing to come here to at least you know discuss things with us. I think that that shows that at, at least he's a little bit open-minded. He's not totally going to ignore us. So I think that you know we we should show him some respect and, and then, you know, question him as to what his intentions are. Thank you. Okay, I guess uh, one other thing, Rich, since you're there. Sam's at the corner of Brainerd, Washington on the signs. He, he, they must have seeds out there or something. He keeps growing more and more. There's additional signs out there. Yeah, I think it's worms now. Worms for sale, bait worms or something. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I know. Um, but I saw that the other day. But growing up and down his uh, building. <laughs> yeah, the building and the. the I'll take care. Of, I'll store. take care of it. That'll be 35 this month. Go ahead. Just one more uh, sign that needs to be changed. It's the um, where the new Dunkin' Donuts is going in over. Yeah. Uh, at the state line, it's still call to arms. Uh, sign is out there. They, that store hasn't been there for a few years. Well, uh, that's one of the issues with the uh, regulations. Some regulations in certain towns, once a business actually leaves, there's an actual regulation that says after a certain number of days that that sign has to be removed. Yeah. It's something that we have to address or will address. It's in also the, upcoming the pizza place in the, uh, in the <coughs> park up there, and they said they were going to have a new where they're going to have the axe throwing thing. That pizza guy's been in jail. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had the fire. I mean, uh, uh, they were everywhere. My that building sign is still up there. Enfield Street, where that pride owns. I saw that seven years ago. My yeah, sign's I, I still up there. Your sign's moment. still up yeah. there. I know. Yeah. It's free Careful. advertisement. Could be looking yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Uh, Nothing the, I can do about it. <laughs> the clothing box is still outside the. Uh, <clears throat> 
restaurant there or the store. Okay. Okay. All right, so now we can move on, I was told. All right. Authorization administrative approvals. Unless you have a report, Director Jen? Um, I would really just be reporting, I think, on applications to be received. Um, okay. So. <laughs> How about a, a, a approval? And then do received. Hmm. Yeah, yeah the, so the author, um, the admin approvals. Um, gift shop. Yep, so we have the uh, 95 Raffia Road. Um, that's just a gift shop going into a retail shopping center. So um, we were just asking to administratively approve that, along with the tattoo shop at 904 Enfield Street. That's the shopping center with, uh, I think, Domino's and the whole donut over there. That's up here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I'd like to make a motion that we allow for an administrative re re approval for site plan review 178895 Rafia Road. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in okay. favor? I'll get it. Just I want to clarify that the oh. where you have approval request for tattoo shop, John Shop owner. That is not correct. Oh, it can't be. I, I know. I had that Lendo lined. His last name is not Shop. I think somebody did a typo there. Oh, I, okay. All right. We can so correct that. Yeah, we we want to clarify that for the record. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll vote on the other one first. Okay. We're doing 1788. Yep. I thought the motion was made in second. Okay. We're just okay. Waiting. All in favor? Opposed? The home extensions unanimous. 1790. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to administratively approve SPR 179904 Enfield Street and make sure that we get the correct owner's name put on here. <laughs> it's A. -O. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Have a second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? Any, it's unanimous. And uh, 90 Elm Street. What do you want to do with that? You have a... Uh, so uh, they provided renderings of what they want to do. Um, to, to staff, it appears that it's a little more muted and um, sort of earth tones than what's there now. Um, we brought it forward. They didn't actually formally apply to us yet, but um, they asked us if they needed to come before you to paint the building. We couldn't find anything in the regulations that said that... Um, uh, that would be required for businesses in that zone, but I we do know um, from past experience that you have reviewed it for um, these type of locations. So um, we did pull the prior approvals to check conditions of approval, but we got the files late in the day today, so we brought it forward so that we didn't delay them at all. Um, if you guys are amenable to authorizing admin approval, um, we can move them forward. If not, that's up to you. This is what it will look like. This Correct. Yeah. This is what it currently looks like. Correct. <laughs> Last page. <laughs> I tried to the other page. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion that we allow for the administrative approval of 90 Elm Street for the proposed change in paint color for the Outback Steakhouse. Second. Second. Okay. Motion made second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? There's no abstentions. Applications to be received. Uh, yep, so there's the three at the bottom, um, 10 Hazard Avenue for a pylon sign, um, uh, 121 Pearl Street for a conversion from a two-family home to a three-family home. Can we do one? Uh, uh, okay, the, the 10 Hazard Avenue. That's Brookside Plaza, all right. Yep. Uh, that's so. just a sign. I'm concerned about next the next two weeks if we're piling up on that or what's the commission's thoughts before we add anything I think most of have been resolved I think okay. we, yeah it's just going to be a paper thing just where, get a right. consensus okay and then put that on for uh, next week or okay. next meeting. meeting okay mm -hmm. 121 Pearl Street 121 
I would want to. I would just request that we have a full site plan so we can address the parking issues and stuff that we just discussed with Maple Ave. Uh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So I would want a full site plan. All right. Okay. Um, There's another one we just did down there, and we had the same thing. We had to, had this uh, stack them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last one was uh, 18 Mellon Road. Yep. Um, that was a former um, wood products packaging um, operation. Um, Connecticut Organics, I think they're affiliated with the neighboring um, Connecticut mulch business. They would like to go into that space and um, uh, do a similar operation, but they want outdoor storage as well, which is why it's a public, uh, public hearing. So. This should be uh, Mullen Road. Is uh, is it New King Street? What's the street that runs down the back, the side there? Off of uh, King Street, there's a small street across. Oh, New, New King. No, it goes Could down and, and it ends in the water. Oh, the, uh, Deep, is that Depot? Depot Hill Road. Depot Hill. Oh, oh, Depot. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think no, that goes to the right. I'm talking about the small street on the left. Anyhow, this yeah. backs up to that area. And, uh, oh, you mean the residential? Yeah. King Court. King Court. King Court. I know I had <laughs> King in there somewhere. And the, the, the people there. on King Court are very protective of that, and this backs up to it. And my, my concern on that would be this is related somehow to our... Uh, the one up at the other end of Mullen Road? I don't think they are related. Yes, they are? Yes. Uh, and the, I think the things that have happened up there with a, that company. Rick, I think, has something to say. If, if you're speaking Connecticut Mulch? Yeah. Yes, they are. It is related to the other two uh, mulch companies, but one at 36 Mullen Road and the other one's at 70 Mullen Road. And the, and the things that we've had with them, they, uh, I understand those people are very concerned yep. because okay. of things yep. that have gone on, and any th this backs up to their development or that street. And uh, so do you well, think we need a full? I think you need well, a full, full hearing. What, yeah, whatever would be discussed then, I guess. Yes, exactly. So that's because that should go to inland wetlands first. If it, there's any inland wetlands on this site. Well, I don't know how far they go down into yeah. the. Well, yeah, because I I know that you know the initial application I I sat on inland wetlands once and you know they they were claiming it was all farming operation. And it turns out that it's not all farming operations. Oh, it but, isn't. But so, anyways, I think that What's you know, and, and they had you know People, again yeah. some farming farming rights in order to develop the land because of the fact that it was a farming. Oh, King Court, application. I know, it lands up in a in yes. with high water. We should water talk about time. it when we have the hearing. I think. Vice. No. I'm saying that it should go to time, to inland wetlands first. Not something that's going to be like a quick. So that we're not looking at. So, yes. not, not in two weeks. Four weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're going into an existing building, aren't they? No. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Right. And that's to give them, the neighbors the opportunity to speak. But if they want right. outside storage, and they oh, they're right, changing right. the For use the of it. Storage, yes. And they want to change it, the use of it. Exactly. That's exactly. Uh, right. King Court should have. King Court would want a hearing on it. There are two other um, applications we received late in the um, uh, in the Rich, week. I can't hear. Oh, sorry. Uh, there are two other applications we received in the office as well um, that are also public hearings. Uh, one for an in-law apartment on North Maple Street, and another for um, on Taylor Road, um, the Hazardville Water Company wants to build a new building. So um, those two applications are in the office as well. So. Hazardville Water Company, are they in the old post office? No. no. They want to they wanna, where their pump station is. Yeah, build a new building or something. You said on Taylor Road, correct? Yeah, it's on Taylor Road at the yeah. corner um, of, I believe it's Moody Road and Taylor Road. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just oh, do a new building. So. so. 
Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. So, so yeah, did, were, you, second. were you looking for dates for those two? No. Yeah, they would go on the next. <laughs> the, the next? Okay. okay. They would go the, the four weeks. The motion's on the table. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I tend to do that this evening. Most of the time. All in favor? Are they opposed? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I got a lot of motions on the table.